So dry. All right, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, go ahead and thumbs this video up. Even though I didn't do anything yet, and don't forget, to, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right down below, so you don't miss it on any of my other videos. As you can see by the title today, I am going to be doing a review not a reaction a review of Nicki Minaj's fourth album Queen and we're gonna see if it was worth the four-year wait now I'm gonna do this video a little bit different today normally when I do album reviews I do a reaction and a review all in one um I've come to the conclusion that that's not very effective it's more effective for the reaction not so much for the review portion because when it comes to music we all know that we have to listen to songs more than one time to get um a good reading on it so I've been listening to the album non-stop since Friday um it's been today's Monday obviously it's been out for three days now um and I've taken all my notes I've also come up with a um score card type board thing so that I can rate the albums because I feel like when I rate them at the end I always just go with what a random number that I feel it deserves not really anything that's like structured so this way I'll make it fair for all the albums that I review from now into the future and I'll actually scoot over a little bit and put the criteria here so I believe there's one two three four five six seven different criterias some are weighed more than others so like the so like the theme if the uh, album has a theme or a message or a point that's weighing more number of good songs or songs that i feel like are that i like one of my you know my favorite songs whatever uh versus how many songs are on the whole album that'll get some points um the lyrics are important so that gets more points and then everything else gets one point so yeah and I'm just gonna go through all of those individually and explain why I gave it the rating that I did and then at the end um, I'll play a snippet of all the songs and I'll stop really briefly and talk about each of the songs not really explaining what the songs mean but just like going and talking about um, like standout verses or standout lines in the song and then some fun facts about each of the songs if it has a fun fact so yeah hopefully this will be a little bit better for you guys I think it's more organized this way and yeah so let's just get right into it so the first um point that we're gonna get into is the cover art so the max that it could get is one point um let me scoot over again this is the album cover i like it i think it ties in very well with the theme of the album um obviously she's looking very african egyptian um majestic here so yeah I, really, I think it ties in i think it's really the colors are really nice so for that it gets the full one point so <laughs> and by the way these are out of 10 like the total should add up to 10 so yeah so the next point would be if the album has a theme or a message or a central point that it's trying to make and i listen for um a cohesiveness throughout the album so since the album is titled Queen, I'm looking for uh, the album to basically be about female empowerment or like um, self-confidence and things like that. And I kind of did get that vibe from majority of the song. Nikki and her verses, she is very confident. She is very empowering. It's kind of almost like when you say the verse yourself, it's empowering to you. You know what I mean? So like you get into that mood, that cocky attitude type, you know, vibe going on there. And so through that, it gives me the vibe of kind of like female empowerment um, and body and confidence, you know, um, looking at yourself, um, like not settling, looking at yourself in a higher light, things like that. Um, and overall, I get that vibe from this album. So I went ahead and I gave it two points for that. And it is out of two. So good job, Nick, <laughs> with the cohesiveness. The next point would be for understanding the order of the songs in the album. 
So when I listen to songs, I want to see why you chose to go from song one to song two, song three. Like, why did you put it in that order? Are they connected? Is there a story being told? Does it make sense? Are they grouped in a certain way? Like, are the, all the singing songs together and then all the, um, the hip hop rap songs together? You know? And actually what I found was some of the songs were connected, but others were not. So like in some sections of the album, it made sense um as far as the order of the songs and then other songs it just seemed like a jump from one topic to another uh so i just it was it's out of one point here and i went ahead and gave it 0.5 just because it wasn't all the way through um so the songs that did go in order were songs five through eight so five six seven eight were connected um one two three and four were kind of connected um nine and ten were connected and uh, 13 through 15 were connected and then at the end it was 18 and 19 but 19 is just like the outro and it's just like a continuation of the instrumental from 18 so i didn't really put that on there but so the next point is well in my notes i have it as number of bangers but it's really just the number of songs that i won't skip over or that i feel like um like the number of good songs on the album versus songs that I just really don't like. And to tell you the truth, I I like pretty much all the songs in the album. Um, but out of the album, as far as songs that I love, I loved 9 out of 19. So that's a lot. That's about half of the album. Um, so I would say very good job. Definitely got two the full two points for that. It is out of two points. Um, so she definitely got the full two points for that. Like I said um just be just because nine of them were my favorite i did like majority of the songs i think there was only one song that i wasn't so fond over and i think it was the song with sway lee so it's chun sway i think it's called now the next point goes into the lyrics now lyrics are extremely important to me i feel like your lyrics are what makes you a great artist especially in this genre of hip-hop rap you need to be able to have bars like that's how you compare to other artists um do you have play on words are you what is your rhyme scheme like are you creative with uh your puns and things like that you know so i actually it's out of two points i gave her 1.5 and the reason i did that she has a lot of i was going to just go ahead and give her two but the reason I took points off was because she repeats lines a lot. And I feel like if you repeat lines, you're running out of stuff to say. So there are two different two different references that she made both three times. She had her swish slash basketball references that she made three times. Uh, and I'll go ahead and play the snippets here for you. Christmas. He say, baby, every day we ballin', I say, swish, swish. Uh, every time I score, she gon' hear them swishes. Uh, carry on, swish, swish, I'm just getting my carry on. Okay, so those were the three references, the swish slash basketball references that she made in the album. Um, and then she also did three references to her name ringing bells, a.k.a. her ding-dong uh, reference. And I'll go ahead and play those here, too. So yeah, those <laughs> those were the three times as well. So as you can see, she did repeat lyrics. Uh, it was three times. Now, if it was two, I would have been like, okay, because I know she had made the King Kong reference twice. Um, but once you get the three times and you did it for two different references, and then in um. Song number 11, she did the Swish and the Ding Dong reference in both in that same song. So I just feel like if you're repeating your lyrics that many times, you're running out of stuff to say. So that's the, but you know, it's really not that big of a deal. That's why I only took off 0.5 of the points because in the rest of the album, her bars are just really on point. So the next thing that I'm rating on is the instrumentation. It is only one point just because Nikki isn't um, a producer. So she's not producing her own beats but she is she does have a sandwich beat she uses um and i went ahead and i gave her a whole point for this because i feel like she has 
I feel like she has a good diversity of different types of hip hop beats, and she even has a couple of her singing songs. She has a song with like a piano melody on it. So yeah, I think she did good as far as being diverse. Um, and like I said, the beats are nice. Really, the beats really make you. If the beats and the lyrics are the two biggest things um, when it comes to music. So I think she did a really good job choosing which beat she wanted to put on the album and which beat she wanted to write over and everything like that. So good job. Then the last point um, is, can I vibe to the album? And the answer is yes. I have, like I said, I've been listening to this whole album from the beginning to the end and on shuffle since Friday. So that's about seven or eight, um, maybe even nine after I record this times that I've listened to the whole album all the way through and haven't skipped anything. Uh, I'll probably skip like some of the slower songs just because I'm not really a big fan of Nicki's slower songs. I'm not really a big fan of slow songs in general just because they tend to give me my feelings. And who wants to be in their feelings, you know? Like I said at the beginning, Nikki gives you that uh, kind of like that cocky vibe. So like once you learn the lyrics and you're singing along with it, you know, you have like that feeling where it's a boost to yourself. It seems like you just feel like, you know, definitely can vibe with this. Um, and yeah. So now we're just going to get into each of the songs. Um, song number one. Okay, so song number one is called Ganja Burns. Um, I'll go ahead and play a clip first. Yo, you can't wear Nikki Wiggin and be Nikki. That's like a fat nigga thinking he could be big. Okay, so the there were a couple lines that stuck out to me in this song. So that's gonna be so that's gonna be where she said, gotta be, gotta be king status to get in your body because a queen is what I embody. It's, it was, I don't think that's, those were the exact lyrics, but it was something around that. And that goes back to, um, again, the female empowerment, the independence, embodying your own self-confidence. Um, you are a queen, you know, perfect with the theme. I think this was a perfect opening song um, for that, especially with the vibe. And there was actually a clip of this song circulating around the internet. I think Nikki posted it herself, I'm not really sure, but um, there was a clip of the video from this song and it has this, it's like the same location as the album cover. So there's like African dancers, um, there's like a tribal ritual thing going on there and it's kind of just basically symbolizing her as the queen. Um, and yeah, so definitely a great opener. Fun fact about this song, the S at the end of the title was actually a typo um, when Nikki was registering her songs for her track list she accidentally put an s at the end of ganja burns it's actually supposed to be ganja burn so it should be corrected soon but right now it is with the s <laughs> so yeah song number two is called majesty it is featuring eminem and uh labyrinth <laughs> Okay, so that was definitely a great collab with M. Uh, and it was a great beat. I love the beat transitions, how it goes from kind of like the piano, kind of smooth, and then goes straight into the beat drop, like back and forth. I love that. Um, one of the one of the verses, well, a couple, there's a couple verses that stood out to me. One of them was, uh, tune switching up, we take them to Jiffy now. <laughs> And the other one was, he want me to be his wife, his missus, like, sippy now. Which is cute, like, Mississippi, like, missus, like, sippy, like, I don't know. I just thought that was really cute. <laughs> but fun fact about this song, um, this is only the second collab that Nicki and Eminem have done together. Um, and that kind of surprises me, because I feel like they have done more. But anyway, it surprises me just because I feel like they do such good songs. They would do such good songs together. The last time they did a song together was Roman's Revenge. And that was eight years ago um, on Pink Friday. And that was in 2010. Another fun fact about the song. This is also Eminem's fastest verse ever. He has 10.3 syllables per second in this song. His previous uh, record was at 9.6 syllables per second and that was in rap guide so he's going really fast like i said i've listened to this album about eight times now this is probably the ninth time and i still don't really know what he's saying i need to go back and just 
All right, so let's get into the next song. The next song is Barbie Dreams. Everybody has been talking about this song, but I'm going to clear it up for you guys. If you are not active on social media, especially Twitter, you probably don't know this, but this song, a lot of people are assuming was a diss track. It's not a diss track. Um, she actually tweeted and said that this song was a very playful song um everybody that she talked about in the song she's actually good friends with so there wasn't any uh malice or anything negative going on there was no type of uh that wasn't her intention here um it's just a really playful song and i'll actually talk some more about the history of this song after i play this clip for you but if he three times a night pace then i'm gonna go down this slow motion then i pick it up look so the the one line that's actually popping off right now is her reference to meek what she said was me still be in my dms be having to duck them i used to pray for times like this faith when i fucked them like what 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 but everybody was going off on that one um but she pretty much had bars for the whole song another one she said was at the end when the beat switched she said uh got them bars i'm indicted that was cute yellow brick road he said i'm a whiz at it that was cute fun fact let's get into the fun facts about this song so she actually did a remake of um well this song is actually a remake of dreams by biggie which is why at the beginning of the song she referenced biggie you know gave her shout out to him but yeah so she was basically remaking that um his version he was it was dreams of dreams of r&b chicks i think was the clean version he was talking about all the r&b girls that he was attracted to and what he would do to them but nikki actually did a remake of this song already uh, if you're a real Nicki fan, you already know what song it is. It was called Dreams, and it's from her Playtime is Over mixtape. And I think, I can't remember what year that was, but I really want to say like 2007, if I'm correct, um, is when that actually came out. And in that remake, it was closer to, the beat wasn't the same beat, but it was closer to what Biggie was saying about R&B girls that he was interested in. Her original remake was about rap dudes that she was interested in. And now with this current version, she's it's kind of like a parody song. And she's talking about rap and a lot other celebrities that <laughs> she wouldn't, she probably wouldn't do or like she would, but there's a catch to it or something like that. So yeah, definitely a really cute song. Um, and again, like I said, this wasn't a diss song. It's just like a parody and she actually said that herself, so yeah all right so let's move on to the next song we're on song number four rich sex featuring lil wayne i know what these niggas like and it ain't my charm i ain't stupid this 250 on my own. all right so the verse where the line that stood out to me in this song was her paid in full movie reference it was oh god rico ace me pay in full my money mitch <laughs> which is cute like oh my god i don't know you just have to you gotta know some stuff to catch catch these things but i love the flow of this song i love the beat of the song um i just love it and it continues on the theme of like having your self-confidence because in this song she's talking about basically don't lower your standards pretty much is uh what the main message is but yeah let's move on to the next one song number five is called hard white so i love the beat on this one as well it's a classic hip-hop trap beat um can't really say too much about that i just love it the one line that stuck out to me on this song and it, this is actually my favorite line on the whole album was when she said i ain't moving weight but i'm in a dope position sis I don't know. I just love the delivery of that line. I love the the play on what it's not really a play on words, but I love like the I just love the line. I love the line. It's cute. It's my favorite line. It's mine. My favorite line on the album. Doesn't have to be yours, but it's mine. So fun fact about this song. Um, it was actually recorded in early 2017. Um, and it was recorded at the same time as No Fraud. So I know there was a lot of people uh, speculating that she was talking about Cardi or the song was targeted at Cardi. But the fact that it was recorded in 2017 just 
kind of confirms the fact that she wasn't um, targeting anything in Cardi. So that's good because, you know, they, they're not really in competition. They have their two, they're in two separate lanes. Like, they can both be great. So, yeah, definitely. All right, let's move on to song number six. Song number six is called Bed featuring Ariana Grande. I like this. It's one of the slow songs, but I like it. It's cute. All right, so that song was cute. I don't have a fun fact or any favorite lines from that song. We should have known that this was going to come, and I love it. I think this was a really good R&B rap collab, and yeah. So we're going to move on to the next song. Song number seven is I Thought I Knew You featuring The Weeknd. It's another kind of R&B rap collab, but the beat is definitely a great beat for The Weeknd. So I'll just let you guys hear some of it. All right, so that was Thought I Knew You. Like I said, that was a great song for the weekend. Uh, I think this was a, it's a catchy song, and I think it was a good collab as well. Um, fun fact about this song, this is only the second time Nicki and The Weeknd have collabed together. The first time being on The Hills. on It was actually on Saturday Night Live, uh, where she added a verse to it, and that was back in 2015. So there wasn't... I think later on it became an official release, but it originated from the Saturday Night Live performance that she did, and she added her verse to that. So, yeah. So let's move on to song number eight. Song number eight is called Run and Hide. This is one of my least favorite songs on the album. It is an R&B song, and she's basically just talking about her relationship struggles. So I'll just play a little bit of this for you guys. Alright, so I don't really have much to say about that song. Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory, like I said. It's talking about her relationship struggles. Um, we're going to move on to the next song. It's called uh, Chun Sway featuring Sway Lee. Now, I'll, le I'll let you guys listen to it first before I say anything. I'm me, I'm Barbie Trippin, DB9, Barbie Whippin, he say he don't want me. I hate Slay, I, I hate Sway Lee's verses. I hate his falsetto. I don't know. There's something just really annoying about it to me. That's just me, though. I don't like Sway Lee's verses. Like, maybe if they were a little bit shorter, maybe if he dropped his voice, like, one octave, you know? But I, I it's just so squeaky and high, and I, I really can't understand half of the stuff that he's trying to say because it's just, like, a mumble because he's trying to get his voice so high. Like, I hate, I hate it. Um, another thing about this song, I got Cardi B vibes from this song. And I, I think I'm matching her flow pattern to the flow pattern of drip i don't know maybe it's just me but i think it's the syllables like they have similar syllables and cutoffs so i think that's why where i'm getting the comparison from but other than that yeah the song's all right it's just sway lee that was kind of blowing me a little bit all right, so the lines that stuck out to me in this song were a lot of blood which you think they're in the cut for and uh, with sex in Anglo. Now, that's a little history lesson for you guys. I'm going to let you guys go ahead and look that up for yourself. Just type Anglo-Saxon and um, you'll see what that was actually about. Um, but yeah, that's a little history lesson for you. Okay, so song number 10, everybody already knows this song. Chun Li has been on the radio. Um, it's been out for a little while. Well, not a little while, but, you know, long enough for people to know what the song is. I went and caught the chopsticks. Put it in my bun just to pop sh Okay, so, yeah, that was Chun Li. Uh, okay, so the line that stuck out to me the most in this song was, Diamonds like I'm signed by The Rock and pushing out his babies till he's by The Rock. So, clearly, The Rock being ROC, Jay-Z's um, record label, and then... And person not his baby till he by the rock till he marry her. So fun fact about this song is Chun Li is actually a reference to the first female fighting character ever in video games, period. Chun Li has paved the way for female characters in video games, especially combat games and fighting games. She first debuted in Street Fighter 2, The World Warrior, and that was in 1991. So Shout out to Chun Li. <laughs> so we're gonna move on. We're halfway there. Yay! Okay, so halfway through the album, we're on song number eleven. 
and song number 11 is called LLC. I like this song. All right, so yeah, I like that song. <laughs> and that was the song that I was telling you guys about that she made her reference, her Ding Dong reference and her Swish reference, both in that same song. But I still like the song. The bar that stuck out to me the most was to you, he's rich and famous, but he's just a guy to me. To me, I don't know. That just puts your confidence on a whole nother level. Like, to somebody other girl, she's, like, fangirling or, like, freaking out over this one dude. But to you, he's just, like, a regular person. Like, your confidence is there. Your self-esteem is there. Your self-worth is there. Like, I don't know. That's just, I love that. I love the flow. Her verse one to me was her, my favorite verse. I love that verse. Um, and fun fact about this song... Jay-Z heard this song and told Nicki that she really snapped on uh, the third verse. Like, her third verse, she went hard on it. He left the third verse. After he told her that, she rewrote the whole song. So, the way she heard it was he only liked the third verse. He didn't say he liked the whole song. So, he had she had to go back and start over. And she, because she wanted, she wanted um, veterans in the rap industry to know that a lot of um, time and energy went into the album so she definitely went back and rewrote it and that's the version that we have today and like I said I like her first verse now so I didn't hear her first verse originally obviously but the song is good so she did a good job on that one we're gonna move on to song number 12 it's called good form I like the song too it's kind of nasty but I like it all right, so that was song number 12. I like that song. It's so catchy. Y'all saw me dancing to it. Okay. The lines that stuck out to me in that song were... Got more coins than the game room. Never hate like the shade room. It, like, that's generally... That's what I caught. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I should probably go back and get the actual lyrics. But that's the gist of what she said. <laughs> um, another line was smash... Smash like the whip flip. So basically, like, she got in a car accident, her car flipped all the way over and smashed like that. And then another one was, the gig up is a stick up, run me the money. I like that line because it was cute the way that she said it. Fun fact about this song. This song was actually used in Nicki's um, Mercedes-Benz commercial. If you guys know anything about marketing, um, most luxury car commercials, they'll play like classical music because it kind of gives the vibe of something that's more upscale. I find it interesting being with my marketing major in college, I find it interesting that they chose to go with a hip hop song or a hip hop beat to use in her commercial. And a hip hop artist that uses their commercial as well, um, but I think that's great that they're expanding the market like that, and they're um, focusing on other people besides for just white people. No shade. Um, actually, all shade, all tea. All offense. So we're gonna move on to song number thirteen, which is another R and B song. It's called Nip Tuck, and basically this song is just talking about um, how you have to cut people off sometimes to switch up, cut them off if they're not benefiting you in any way in your life. Yeah, so I don't have much to say about that song. It's one of my least favorite songs on the album as well. It falls into our R and B pop kind of feel, and I'm not really a fan of Nicki's R and B pop songs, so. Yeah, there weren't really any lines that stuck out to me in that song either. So we're just going to move on to the next one. The next song, song 14, is just a short interlude. And it actually just acts as a connector between um, Nip Tuck and then the next song. So 14 is called Too Lit, Too Lit, Too Late. So that's just a short interlude that's connecting those next two songs. Well, the previous song to the next song. The next song is song 15. It's another slow song. Um, it's called Come See About Me. Yeah, so this song, fun fact about this song, Nikki said that she actually cries every time she hears this song. And I can agree with that. Like, I feel like this song is the song on the album that gets me the most emotional. And I don't like songs that make me emotional. So, uh, but yeah, but it's really a beautiful song. This is what I was talking about before when I talked about the instrumentation on the album. This is one of those songs that kind of contra... Well, it brings a contrast to... Well, from her other songs that she has on the album. 
Um, and yeah, but if you like Nikki's pop songs, this, I think you'll, or like her slower songs, you'll definitely like this song. So we're going to move on to song number 16. It is called Sir is featuring Future. Gang, sir, pretty gangster. So she was better than me when the prankster. All right, so I like this song. The only thing that confuses me about this song is... Who the heck is is the sir that they're talking to? Like, I have no idea who they're talking to. Who is sir? Who is the sir? Who are y'all talking to? If somebody can answer that question for me, that would be great. But other than that, I like it. Um, It's cute. Another collab with Future. I have a couple favorite lines on this song. One of them being, get her a ticket. She's a fan, sir. Cute. Like how you did that. And another one was, I call them Sway because they ain't got the answer. We're going to get into the next song, which is song number 17, almost at the end. It's called Miami. All right, so that song, I like that beat too. It's another one of those classic trap beats. One of the lines that stood out to me in this song was, none of you bum can sit with me and Gretchen. Now, now, mean girls. Come on, Nick. You knew you was going to catch us with that Mean Girls reference, girl. Come on, girl. Uh, fun fact about this song, though. Um, this song kind of pays a nod to Kodak. Um, she did... Kodak is still in jail, obviously. Um, but she used a beat that's similar to his style. And she actually mimicked his flow a little bit as well. So, And at the beginning, the opening little clip was of him saying that he's not going to tell us how to get away with murder. That was him. So... All right, we're going to listen to pretty much the last song because the last song and then number 19, which is the outro, just connects. I'll still play a little bit of the outro, but um, yeah, it just connects. So number 18 is called Coco Chanel featuring Foxy Brown. Well, let's get it. All right, so that was <laughs> that song is really cute as well. I don't know all these songs that I just get a cute vibe. I don't know. I always say songs are cute. They always cute. Like the little punchlines and y'all little verses, they cute. The song that stuck out to me was had to drop Queen on them like a guillotine. She done took everybody's heads off with the album and she left that to the end to say it. All right, Nick, I see you. I see you. I see. But yeah, the beat is fire. And I, it, to me, that kind of, it. I, I don't know. It kind of gives me like majestic vibes, like royalty vibes. So I like how it's tight. It kind of like closes everything up. Um, and yeah, so we're just going to listen to a little bit of the outro. Like I said, it's just a continuation of this song. Um, and then I'll wrap up with some closing thoughts about the album. You know what this make, the beat makes me think of? It makes me think about sitting on the back of a camel and walking through Egypt in the desert or something. That's the vibe that I get. Uh, to sum everything up, if you guys didn't already add up the points that I gave at the beginning as far as rating the album, the song did get a 9 out of 10 from me. Was it worth the four-year wait? Um, I think we could have got it a little bit sooner, to be honest. Four years is a long time to wait for somebody to release some music. I'm not disappointed at all, though, so that's definitely a good thing. Um, but four years is definitely a long time, so I think she was risking a lot by waiting so long to release some new music because you'll always have your diehard fans, but in any type of entertainment industry, you always have to try to stay relevant. So I think she was really pushing it, waiting so long. I think this is the return. We're seeing a little bit more of old Nikki. I won't say return because she is older now. Like she's developing into a, a new per well, not a new person, but like a different person. As you grow up, you do develop and mature. So I do think that she is definitely finding her balance between um, her roots in hip hop and then being on a public stage internationally. I do think that because she's on an international stage, she needs to have those slower songs and those R&B songs just to appease her international audience. Like she's, her audience isn't just um, people that listen to hip hop, you know, she has a wider audience now. So she kind of has to keep everybody in mind when she's making music, just because I'm not a fan of every single one of the songs doesn't mean there's not somebody else out there that is. So 
I definitely understand why certain songs are on the album. I think she's doing a great job appeasing her international audience. I think that's great. I do appreciate the fact that she has more rap songs on this album, though, because I feel like in the past she tried to balance being a rap artist and hip hop. I mean, um, hip hop and uh, and R and B. She's not an R and B artist, so I think she was trying to like find herself and see, you know, trying to dibble and dabble back then. She's not pop. She's not R and B. She is a rap hip hop artist, so. I think the amount of rap and hip hop songs on the album is great because that's who she is, you know. And again, bringing those other songs in to not neglect her other audiences that have she's brought on board over the years and her international audience as well. Um, but I think she definitely has a great balance going on. I won't say it's the old Nicki, but she's definitely bringing back more focus on her bars, more focus on her punchlines, um, more for more focus on play on words, playfulness of the hip hop industry with um, Barbie Dreams. Definitely paying homage to other people. You know what I'm saying? Playing homage to Biggie. Definitely um, showing a nod to Kodak. Yeah, so I think she did a great job with this album. Again, I did give this album a 9 out of 10. Good job, Nikki. Uh, I've been a bar for a long time. She did take the hiatus. I never fell out of love, but, you know, she was confusing me with the hip, the, with the, with the R&B songs. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to lie. I was waiting for this comeback, and I am not disappointed, so... Thanks, guys, for watching. Let me know what you guys think about the album. Let me know down below what your favorite song was. If you didn't like the album at all, I still want to know about it. Um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you made it this far, definitely. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my other videos. I'm waiting for a Little Wayne's album to drop because I can't wait to do a review on that. Then I'll have basically the Young Money Head hitters, all their albums reviewed. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to do that. Also, my hair site is up and complete. So you guys definitely make sure you guys head over there. Slaybaddyhair.com. Um, I do make wigs as well. And I just added that wig option for me to custom make your wig onto the website. And you can find that under the bundles, the sew-ins, bundle deals, and the wig section. Yeah, I have a coupon code going on right now for a back-to-school sale. Coupon code is back to baddie. I'll put it right here. Um, and yeah, so make sure you guys head over there and get your back-to-school hair. Make sure you follow me on all my social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. All that's going to be right on the next screen and down below in the description for you, right next to my hair site link. And... Yeah, thanks guys for watching again, and I'll definitely see you guys in my next video.